Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey. I have a brand new afghan design that I think you're gonna love. Now, the, the last afghan that I designed that I was so most popular for and really was really excited about it, and I'm still excited because it is one of my all-time favorites, is the Bumbleberry Afghan, just like you see here. And since August of 2011, I've been kind of looking around and trying to see, you know, what more can I do with afghans to push it so that I love the next afghan just as much as I love this one. Now, just last week, when before filming of this, I guess, is that you know Daniel had a vase on the table. It looked gorgeous. It was stuffed with peonies, some blue flowers, some vines, some grass. Really quite gorgeous. And because of that, I was looking at it thinking, hmm, what would that look like if the Afghan colors were the same? So sit back, relax. I'm gonna about to reveal to you the actual peonies Afghan designed after the vase that Daniel had created. So here it is, my brand new afghan, and I'm going to turn it around in just a second. And what you're seeing here is a combination of four different kinds of yarn worked into this project. So the white that you see is the With Love by Red Heart. So why choose With Love over Surface Saver? Simply the softness is incredible. And for this, because the actual other uh, types of yarn that I used are extremely soft and plush, I didn't want to use Super Saver because then the white would be kind of a, uh, abrasive versus the other yarn that's in there. So it actually makes it flow better, it looks better, and it feels really amazing. So we then have uh, three other types of yarn that is all done within the Red Heart Collage. And the collage here, if you really carefully look at it, it's a combination of really slow transitioning colors. And this happens naturally. So what's going to happen is that when you work around this, that you'll see that the, the pink has different hues at different points because of the transitioning of this yarn. So we also, so the colors that you see here, the blue is called Blue Wave, it's the collage blue wave. Uh, the reddish colors, or the pinkish, is called Rose Dust. And then finally the greenish with the kind of like purplish and pinkish tinges within the green, that's called Landscape Green and that's also by Collage. The amount of yarn that you're going to need is you're going to need two balls of each. So two balls of With Love, uh, two balls of rose dust, two balls of blue wave, and two balls of grand, uh, landscape green. So let's turn this bad boy around. When you turn around this afghan, you're going to notice that the gorgeous hexagon right in the center. It really does a beautiful focal point when it comes to this. You will also notice on this afghan, and I will probably show you that more in the tutorial itself, is that there's actually two different sides to looking at this afghan. I just purposely designed it so all the white was facing one direction when it came to the center of the hexagon, and all colors are facing the other, so there's a right side and a wrong side. And so basically, instead of just going all the way around and around and around like you typically would in a granny square, what I decided to do is that I reversed it so that the... Um, all the colors were facing one direction, all white is facing the other. And because of that, it makes one side look a little more white than the other side. And uh, so you'll notice that as well. And so basically, the way that this tutorial is going to operate for you is that I'm not going to take you through start to stop on this thing. I'm going to show you how to get started here, how to change your yarn colors, how to reverse it, but you're going to need the written directions that I'm providing absolutely for free to tell you what colors need to go. And basically, I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to start it off here, and then you're going to jump, and I'm going to show you how to do the boxed block stitch when it comes to doing um, the outside as well. And then basically, when it comes to doing the outside layer, it's actually really simple, is that just on the edge, over top of the box blocks. There's always five stitches when we do that. So the first one is single crochet, the next stitch will be um, double crochet, the middle will be two triple crochets, and then double and single. And because of that, it makes the edge have like a flower. To get started, we're going to do a slip knot, and we're just going to do it like that. And there's slower tutorials available. And using my size K hook, we want to chain four. So one, two, three, and four, and we want to form a ring. So all you have to do is, do is go into the center point here, or into the beginning of the chain, okay, pull down just like this, and I pull down so that I can always know where the center is, grab the yarn and pull through, and there is the center of your ring. So now let's begin doing our hexagonal shape, and how we start as per the directions, moving up to row number two, step two, is that we're gonna do one, two, three, so chain three, and we want, this is actually one side of the six, so we actually need to complete two more of these. So how we do it is that a three chains actually equals a double crochet. So we're just going to double crochet 
two times. So one and two right into the center of the ring. And now we want to do our first corner. And how we do a corner is no matter where you are in this project, it's always going to be the same. You're always just going to chain one. In normal uh, granny squares, it's chaining of two because it's a 90 degree angle. The chaining of one allows you just to do a nice bend. So now we're going to come back into the center of the ring and we're going to trip our double crochets three more times. And this will be another side. So one, two, and three. Okay, and we're going to do another bend. So we chain one, so this is your corner, and now we're going to come in. You'll notice that the straggler has actually been trapped down on the line. Any uh, person that is into crochet would probably know to do that automatically. So we're going to do it three more times into the center of the ring. And I'm using the blue wave here by, uh, with the red heart collage. So you can actually clearly see now you got one, two, you got three sides of the six. So we're going to do another corner, so it's chaining one, and then back in for another three double crochet just has seen and we are going to do another corner so chain one we're going to come back down into the center of the ring for another three so essentially you are looking for as I mentioned in the pattern you're looking for six groups of three double crochets to all together okay so you got one corner two three four five so you only have five sides so far again we're just going to do another corner so it's just chaining one coming back in so there's going to be a lot going on into the center of this ring but it's required in order for it to be um, really nicely uh, started out so this is the final corner and we're going to now join with the slip stitch but before you can do that you have to chain one first uh, because it's just like you're turning a normal corner and then we're just going to go into the top where you did the chaining of three when you started, pull through and through. And there, voila, you can actually see the six sides now taking shape. And so you can just make sure that you have everything in groups of three, and there should be six of them. So let's move along to your next step. So we're now moving on to the next step, and we're just going to be growing out the hexagon as a normal shape at this point. So we're just going to start off, and we're going to just chain three. So one, two, and three. And this counts as the very first one in this corner, and I'll explain that to you when we come back around. So the very first stitch you need to come into is actually right directly underneath, right there. And we're going to double crochet in. Okay, so we're going to, all the three that you see there in the row will actually all have a double crochet going right over top of it. Okay, so this is going to be what you're doing for the majority of this project. So now you've run out of stitches because this is the next corner. So in the corner we call it a V stitch and it's going to be one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet is all into the same space. Okay, so we're going to do that. One double crochet, chain one, another double crochet. Okay, and we just officially turn the corner. And what happens here, because you're putting this into the corner, is that the next time you come across this, this actually will be the new uh, flat space, and then this is the new corner, so it actually grows out evenly. So here's where I need you to pay attention. So you have three here, and so the first one is right there. See how it's kind of sticking out at you? Some people like to jump over that, but it's actually right there. We're just going to double crochet ourselves over. You will notice in the instructions uh, that I have actually given you the counts of the stitches going across the flat space and you, I'm just going to scroll down so I can actually say it. So then we started off with three down here and the next one we're going to end up with five. So this is the next corner here. So the next, so the, every flat space is going to grow by uh, two stitches going across. And that's really critical because you need to keep this in mind when you're doing all of your stitching because the box block stitch that is going to start eventually is relying on that. So you see how you went from three uh, and then we went into five. So we just keep turning. Okay, we're in the corner again. So we're just going to do the next flat space. So just adding double crochet in. The fabulous thing about this yarn is that it does transition on its own and uh, so you don't need to worry about that. So all three are in, so now you're back in the next corner, so another V-stitch. One double crochet, one chain, one double crochet. Oops. Okay, so we're now in the flat space again. Remember, it's just right underneath. Okay, 
Okay, so I think you got the gist of that. So let's meet back up. Let's keep going around and I'll meet you back up over here and we're gonna slip stitch and move on. And we're actually gonna fasten this material off and start on with the next color as well. Okay, I'm ready to fasten off and I just got my last corner here to do. Now we already started, remember in the very beginning you chained up three, that is part of this. It doesn't look like it because it doesn't look like that, but it actually is. So you're just gonna double crochet Instead of the V-stitch, you're only going to do half of the V-stitch. So one double crochet, one chain, and we're just going to join at the top here with a slip stitch. Okay? And now this color is officially done. So grab your fancy dancy scissors. And cut your string. And all I do, and this is not proper, but this is what I do, is that I pull up just like this, and then I slip in my hook underneath, and I pull it through and then I pull it through that loop. And the reason for I do it is that it does a really nice tight finish. And now I'm just gonna weave in my edge. So I'm just gonna throw these over top and pull it through the stitch. So anything left hanging out can be safely trimmed because you know that it's been weaved in a good distance, just like so. So let's now move on. We're gonna now switch it over to the With Love White as we begin again. And right where I finished off is right where I'm gonna start. So this corner here will always be now the start and stop for the entire project uh, that going forward. So to begin, another one, and of course I'm not doing it properly, but this is the way I do it because this is what I prefer, is that I start off with a slip knot because whenever you get so many cut strings, you're, I'm always worried about it falling apart. So remember what I told you uh, in upstairs is that I said that all the color is on one side and all the white is on another. So technically in a granny square, I would have just joined here and kept going, but I want you to turn it so this is the good side and I want to turn it so the wrong side is now facing you. Okay, so just turn it completely around and then jam in your hook and start it. So I'm just going to wrap both of the materials around and pull that through just like that. And I let the straggler fall. And I, that's the way I join. I know it's not proper, but it's what I prefer. So I'm going to chain up three. So one, two, three. So now this is the first half of the corner when doing a hexagon. So now my first stitch is just right there. So I'm just going to stick on my hook for a double crochet. I want to get my straggler and I want to put it on top just like so. And I want to do it so that I can trap in that straggler into position as I'm working a double crochet is going across. Okay, so in the hexagon, every time we go around, we're making this thing bigger because we keep adding stitches to the corner by doing the V-stitch. Okay. So here we go. So we have five here that we did have on below, uh, below, but now we have the corner here, so it's six. And so then this corner here, when we do the V-stitch in the, just the first half of it, you'll see that it went from three, five, seven, and hopefully that makes sense to you. So now chain one and come back down into the corner. See how I'm trapping in that um, straggler here with the blue? I can safely trim that in just a few minutes as well. So I just want to keep going around uh, this as I indicated my direction so every double crochet is going to get a double crochet okay and then the corners are going to get their famous little V stitch and uh, this is actually pretty self-explanatory um, how about you, I just let you go so I'm going to do another V stitch okay right in this corner you can see the corners they just have two always in so you can actually always see that if you're ever confused a V stitch is one double crochet one chain one double crochet and I want you to keep going all the way around and I'm going to meet you back up over here because we're going to keep on the white for another revolution.